Baylor coming off a win over Iowa State, 45-27. Kansas State lost to Texas in their last game, 23-9 in Austin. Kansas State, they've lost four in a row. And we're underway for Manhattan. Zamara and Platt are back deep. And this one brought out of the end zone by Platt. And he'll get to the 18-yard line, Chris Platt, before being taken down. So a couple things you want to know when Baylor has the football. Well, this offense is a roster-driven offense. It's not a quarterback-driven offense. Jared Stidham has great players around him, and now he's got the keys to that very fast sports car called the Baylor offense. Don't crash the car, young man. And then for the defense, Elijah Lee has to lead this defense and allow no freebies early. The last thing you want to do is allow a young quarterback to gain confidence via the big play. First down and 10 of the 19-yard line, and they'll throw a first down. Corey Coleman with the catch. Gets up the sideline. There's a big play on the first play. Coleman out of bounds inside Kansas State territory. They mark it at the 46. Sean Newland pushed him out of bounds. Did him. There's the first big play of the game. And a great example that he doesn't have to do much. All he's got to do is execute his reads, get the ball to the playmakers, and allow them to run. Gain of 36 yards, and he'll throw it on second down. This time to the far side. KD Cannon with the grab. And he gets out of bounds at the 40. So Jared Stidham, 6'3", 210, true freshman, 19 years old, first career start. But Joel, he's played in all seven games this year. As, as experienced a true freshman as you'll find to this point in the season, but still a youngster. Second down and three at the 38. Stidham the pass again. Flag on the play, steps up in the pocket. He's going to run it and slides down after picking up the first down in front of Duke Shelley. Five of the defense. It's a five yard penalty. And it That's Jordan Willis. Left defensive end. Got started a little bit. Snap. Happened right when he was in the neutral zone. So first and ten at the 33 opening drive for Baylor. Stidham throwing it again. Steps up. He'll run it and slide down as he crosses the line of scrimmage. So here's a kid that was a dual threat at quarterback in high school. Three time. All-State at Stephenville, top 10 quarterback, recruit by every service. As a senior, he combined for 3,900 yards and 50 touchdowns. Second and nine, Stidham to Shock Linwood out of the backfield, squares his shoulders, first down and more. As Shock Linwood knocked out of bounds by Elijah Lee after a 20-yard game. I know it's a little thing, but I love the play so far from Stidham. That ball was accurately thrown right on Linwood's chest and allowed him to run after the catch. Baylor has scored a touchdown on its first drive in every game this season. Stidham. And incomplete. That one thrown a little bit low for Jay Lee. The tempo for Baylor early in this game has been phonetic. You get the sense that just now inside the 15, he's starting to catch his breath a little bit, realize where he's at, first poor throw of the night. Second down and 10. Kansas State gave away the blitz too soon. Baylor will check the play. Usually means man coverage on the outside. Here Stidham runs the option to pitch. Linwood running over wide pass. Gets inside the five-yard line as Sean Newland delivered the hit. And a straight option off of the in man on the line of scrimmage. Unblocked, the quarterback attacks his inside shoulder. You pitch the ball to the running back. It should be wide open, which it was for a first down. Gain of 11. First and goal at the one. Opening drive for Baylor that started at their own 19-yard line. Linwood in the backfield with Stidham. Stidham keeps it. Touchdown. Baylor Bears just like that Art Bryles said I don't look at him as the F word meaning freshman because he's not he's a ready quarterback and he showed it on the opening drive and patience in the ball fake making the read 
Number 97 crashes down. That's DeMonte Hood, the defensive lineman. Stidham knows there's going to be an unblocked player, and he sneaks into the end zone anyways. What a great opening series for Jared Stidham. Chris Callahan comes in to attempt the extra point as Baylor goes on a seven-play drive covering 81 yards. Extra point is good. They score with a true freshman, 19-year-old, in a minute and 42 seconds. Baylor on top of in under two minutes as he runs it in for the score. I just love the game plan early. A couple of early hitch routes that he completes right on the chest of his skilled wide receivers. They get north and south. He completes a swing route. Easy throws because he executed them perfectly. Drove them right down the field. Now Baylor will send it away. Spencer Evans kicking off. Morgan Burns, Dominique Keith back deep. And Burns from the three. And Burns stripped up at the 12-yard line. Great special teams coverage by Baylor. So Kansas State comes onto the field. Couple things you need to know when the Wildcats have the football. Well, you got to keep your eye on Cody Cook, number 19. He's a wide receiver and quarterback. We'll see him in both places tonight. He's going to have to have a big night because he's their most talented guy on the outside. And for the defense, Baylor, they've got one of the best defense, defensive front sevens out there, and it starts with Andrew Billings. Against the run of Kansas State, Andrew Billings is going to have to play to his potential. Gus, his potential is one of the best defensive linemen in all of America. Billings missing the Iowa State game with an ankle injury. He's back, joined by Sean Oakman. Two terrific defensive linemen, first and 10 at the 12-yard line, and wow. Kansas State calling a timeout. Joe State Hubner on the first play of the game. Are you not afraid to challenge a natural order, Mr. Frankenstein? No. Failed to throw for 100 yards in two straight games, completing just 34% of his passes since Big 12 play began. But he has shown some signs. Rushed for 111 yards and four touchdowns against TCU earlier this year. When Kansas State is playing the playing well, Joel, they're running the ball. They're going to have to tonight control the clock against this Baylor offense. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line. Hubner. And he'll hand it off. No, fakes the handoff, and he runs it himself. Hubner. Great ball fake. He'll get eight, maybe nine yards on the play. That's what he does well. Great with the ball fake in the backfield, but this is the exact type of plan that they're going to need. Now they huddle up, and they're going to try to take as much time off the clock as possible. And yes, they're going to do that even in the first quarter. Play clock at 20. I'm sure it'll get right down to around 10, maybe inside of 10, before he snaps the football. Second down and one. On. And here's the handoff. Jones straight ahead looking for the first down, and he has it. And you're absolutely right, Joel. The Wildcats are more methodical than any team in the Big 12, snapping the ball every 29.4 seconds. That's far and away the slowest pace in the conference. Well, in this conference, of course, so many high-flying offenses. And Bill Snyder, as Art Bryles says, his competitor tonight, will just old-school you to death. He's fine. He's very patient, and he will be three and a half yards at a pop all the way down the field. He's fine playing football like that. Not too many young coaches are patient enough to implore that type of game plan. 24th season as the head coach of Kansas State, his second time around. First down. Huber throws sideline. And it's Cook. Cody Cook. Versatile athlete with the catch. Gains eight on the play. I love what they're doing so far. So this is a designed run play that Hubner then has the ability to throw the ball on the outside if there are too many run defenders from Baylor. That's a concept that they like to call a slash concept, run slash pass. Hubner there executed it perfectly. Second down and three at the 30-yard line. Gronkowski in the backfield. Hubner follows Gronkowski. And he won't pick up the first down. Billings with a surge on the play, and Andrew Billings and Bo Blackshear combining on the tackle. I should have watched the linebacker here. Hubner's eyes are going to be all over him. Hubner's going to 
search out the designed run, but he wants to throw to that tight end. As soon as the linebacker took away that passing lane, he had to run it himself. By that time, the defensive line had closed down the lane. A gain of one brings up third down and two at the 31-yard line. Opening drive for Kansas State. Hubner wants to run it himself again, looking for the first down. Leads forward, and it will be close. It'll depend on the spot. Based on that near side spot, he looks about a half yard short. You need to get all the way up past the 33 yard line, and it just doesn't. Yeah, elbow down, ball short of it. Excellent spot by the officials. How about Kansas State? Bill Snyder saying we're going for it on fourth down. We need a half yard. Showing some confidence in his guys. His quarterback is 6'5. Quarterback sneak. And he gets it. Earlier in the year, they kicked the field goal late in the game on a fourth down against TCU. That decision ate Bill Snyder up because he said he didn't feel like he was playing to win that game. And already early in this one, in his own territory on their first drive, goes for it on fourth down, telling his players he, he's here to win the game tonight. So a first down at the 34-yard line for K-State. Winston Dimmel in the backfield with Hubner. Play clock down to three. Hubner runs it. And a three-yard gain. This is going to be a phone booth game, meaning that it's going to be tight quarters. Inside the tackle running with the quarterback Joe Hubner and this defensive line for Baylor is going to have to answer the bell. Andrew Billings is about 85% tonight. He had an ankle injury a couple of weeks ago against West Virginia. Coach has said, listen, we'd rather have Andrew Billings at 85% than anybody else at 100%. We'll see how that run defense holds up early in this game. Second down and seven. Hubner again. They'll throw it underneath. And it's caught. Cody Cook gobbled it up. Kansas State in Baylor territory. So here's where he's looking. He's going to be looking right in this hole behind the linebackers. As soon as the linebacker gets too much width, Hubner's going to throw the pop pass behind him for a completion and a first down. That's a designed run, and the quarterback has the ability to stand up and throw the ball, even though the linemen are downfield, but not quite past that three-yard mark. Already a four-and-a-half-minute drive for K-State. First down from the Baylor 45. Dimmel and Jones in the backfield. And they'll hand it off to Jones. No. It's Hubner again. I tell you what, I'm getting fooled on these ball fakes. Well, he does such a great job. You know, the coaching point on plays like this is that the quarterback wants to ride with the pocket of the running back. His eyes are on the defensive line. He sticks the football out, and then he rides it all the way in. That's as good of ball handling as you'll see from a quarterback in college football. Hubner not only faking out you, Gus, but the defense for Baylor, who had to react and catch him for five. Tenth play of the drive that started at the Kansas State 12, second and five at the 40. This time he hands it off and Jones goes through. Charles Jones, Jr. from Mandeville, Louisiana. Well, up to this point, this is exactly the game plan that Kansas State wants to have the entire night. But the key is, after these successful drives, which they've been on, currently right now over five and a half minutes, 10 plays, 51 yards, you've got to come away with points, preferably touchdowns, because you start trading touchdowns for field goals with Baylor, and you'll end up getting beat. Third down and two with the 37. Maybe two down territory here as well. Rukowski, the running back. Great lead blocker. Hubner follows him. Hubner won't get through it. He gets pinned. Sean Oakman, 6'9", 275. Penn State transfer with the tackle for a loss. He got skinny in the middle of that defensive line, was able to get all the way into the backfield and force this fourth down. But for the second time on this series, Bill Snyder keeps his offense on the field, and they'll go for it again. Only Ohio State's Joey Bosa with 46 has more tackles for losses 
among active players than Oakman, who has 44 now. Fourth down and two at the 37. And another timeout by Huebner. Two timeouts called in the first quarter by Kansas State. Big fourth down coming up. When you make Kansas State, this is Kansas State's opening drive of the game, and they've held the ball for six minutes and 39 seconds. Kendall Bryles, offensive coordinator, Art Bryles' son to the right. Giving some advice to his young quarterback, Jared Stidham, who's waiting to get back on the field. Fourth down and short for Kansas State. They need two yards. Huebner to throw. Caught first down, K-State. Cody Cook again. Well, they needed Cook to be a big part of what they did, in particular on big downs, and a fourth down that doesn't get any bigger than that. Cook runs a very simple out route, the ball perfectly thrown, right on the top of his helmet, brings it in for a first down. That's a critical conversion, and I know it's only the first quarter, but yes, that is a critical conversion for their second on that drive on fourth down. Cody Cook, former walk-on from Hutchinson Junior College. Three catches, 31 yards for him already. First and 10 at the 32 of Baylor for Kansas State. Huebner with a hole, and Huebner sprinting through the hole, stopped at the 25 by Grant Campbell. And they're not booing, they're hewing. Well, this is exactly the rhythm that Kansas State wants, and I love the patience that Huebner runs with. He allows the blocks to take place in front of him because they're pulling linemen. Gronkowski, the fullback, has to go and get the defensive end, and that patience is critical for the hole to open up. 14th play of the drive that started at the Kansas State 12. Second and four, the 26. They hand it off, Jones. First down and more, Charlie Jones. Grant Campbell grabbed his ankle, but he gained 13. Well, this is not what Phil Bennett wants to see, the defensive coordinator for Baylor. Works for Bill Snyder back during their great run from 99 to 2001. As a defensive coordinator, had some great defenses here at Kansas State, but now it's a different era, and he's charged with going from defending spread offenses all year to now getting in that phone booth against Kansas State. First down and 10 at the Baylor 14. Gronkowski Jones in the backfield. Jones again. Jones looking for the end zone. Down at the one yard line. Charles Jones and the Kansas State offense rocking now. Glenn Gronkowski, 48, gets a great block there. And then Charles Jones almost gets into the end zone. Elbow just short at the half yard line. A gain of 13, first down and goal at the one. Quarterback sneak time. There it is. And they're going to mark it just short. So hard to tell where the football actually is. But Huebner looks like his waist is all the way across the goal line by that angle. Sure looked like it would have been a touchdown. They are going to go ahead and take a look at it. The ruling on the field was... We're going to have to piece this together. The difficult part, Gus, will be that you don't actually have a shot of the football, the physical football, so you won't know if it actually got pulled down closer to his waist or under his waist. becomes just a mass of humanity. Mike Pereira, as always, with us, our rules expert in Los Angeles. Mike, what are you seeing on this? You know, Joel, I'll tell you, when you look at it from the headlinesman spot, you just can't see the ball. But the ball is definitely in the end zone. You know that. Now, are you going to be able to get a shot down the line here? This is what the, this is what the poor headlinesman's looking through is a bunch of bodies. Now, you can piece them together like you say and say he is in the end zone, although you never see the ball breaking the plane. 
but um, you know it'll be interesting to see I think if it was me even if I couldn't see it I could tell from one shot that it's definitely a touchdown and Mike I know that you are very conservative as I like to be with these replays and you want the indisputable evidence but you feel very comfortable After further review on the field stands second down Mike I was with you I would have felt comfortable giving him a touchdown piecing those views together I think, though, that what you're seeing now, really, in college football is you have to see it absolutely beyond the shadow of a doubt. And without seeing the ball, I mean, even though he's in, they're not going to overturn it. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Kansas State reloading. They'll try it again with Huber. Good push. Touchdown. Seventeen play drive covering 88 yards. Kansas State eats up nine minutes and 17 seconds. What a tremendous answer from Kansas State. We see a vintage Baylor drive under two minutes right down the field for a touchdown. And Kansas State answers with a methodical, physical, run-oriented drive for a touchdown. Jack Cantelli comes in to attempt the extra point, and it's good. 3.53 to play in the first quarter. Kansas State counter-punching. Going to the body with the run. We're level at seven. 30 yards, Hubner. Three passes, three for three, 31 yards. All to Cook, longest drive of the year for Kansas State as young Jared Stidham prepares to come back onto the field. Zamara and Platt back deep, and this one will not be returned. Let's go downstairs to Molly McGrath. Yeah, guys, Jared Stidham antsy on Baylor's sideline during that last drive, pacing around, trying to stay warm by a heater. He even got some teammates to throw the ball around with him, so you can tell he is anxious to get back out onto the field, guys. All right, thank you very much, Molly. And going back to Kansas State in that drive, felt like I was watching some vintage Joe Frazier, Joel. Yes, I mean, he, Kansas State was hitting them in the same rib. 15 straight times and then <laughs> they're walking up the 16th time saying don't flinch <laughs> just body shot after body shot so let's see how Baylor responds first down in 10 at their own 25 shot Linwood running the football on first down with space crosses the 30 up to the 31 gains about six yards on the play and this kid has been awesome I know the offense and the receivers and the quarterback gets a lot of credit but Shock Linwood can really run the ball. Second best rushing team in the entire country. Linwood again running left this time. We'll start a step. He'll lead forward, get close to the first down marker. Markel Bryant with the tackle. He had a 171 yard game against Iowa State, went over 3,000 yards in his Baylor career. Linwood looking for the first down and has it. Shock Linwood and the Bears. And that's one of the deceiving things about this Baylor team. They want to run the ball first. They do. It's the engine to their entire offense, along with those five offensive linemen. Great cut and vision from Shock Linwood to find that left side hole for the conversion. 11-yard gain. First down and 10 at the 45. Stood in the throw over the middle. Caught. See you later. Touchdown, KD Cannon. 55. Jared Stidham is so comfortable, partner. He's already got the shakedown. He's, he's got the shakedown. I, I'm going to have to learn that shake. Might have to see that a couple more times. I can, this is such a big league throw from a true freshman making his first start. It is on the money. On the money. Timing plus accuracy equals yards after the catch. That ball was caught by Katie Cannon in stride. It's the only way he makes it to the end zone. Baylor scores in 56 seconds. Chris Callahan in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. So the big question's coming in to this game for Stidham. Would he be nervous? Would he be ready? Can he leave? Cool as a fan. Shocked if Stidham didn't play well here tonight. 
Stidham four for five, 119 yards and a touchdown. Evans sends it away. Burns and Heath back deep. This will be Morgan Burns from the five. And Burns knocked down from behind at the 24-yard line. So Baylor up 14 to seven. Last drive for Kansas State over nine minutes. Well, the pressure is now clearly on the Baylor defense because the game plan the, the game plan is evident. They're going to run the quarterback counter. They're going to throw the pop pass. They're going to give it to Charles Jones. The onus is on the front seven of the Baylor Bears. They have got to show up and be ready to play. That offensive line has done a heck of a job so far for Kansas State. First down and 10 at the 23. Huebner pulls it up. Huebner close to a first down. Joe Huebner running with purpose tonight. This is that wide stretch play that they're faking. So Huebner goes all the way out to like the tackle or the tight end before he's making the fake. That creates seams in the defense. Big holes there to choose from. Huebner keeps it, creates a second and short. 11 carries, 36 yards. Second down and one at the 32. Gronkowski lines up with Huebner. Huebner again, straight ahead, first down. Joe Huebner. This time, gain seven, and how does it go? At the beginning of the week, does Coach Snyder come to him and say, you're gonna run it 25 times? He said, get your Advil ready, and get that ice bath ready, because it's gonna be all you today. Hubner picks the lane, gets north and south, and the patience is what it's all about. If the blocks don't take place on that counter play, then you're just gonna run to the back of your lineman, but he allows that hole to open up. First down and 10 at the 39. Charles Jones, the deep man. Huebner to throw it. Now Huebner says, I'm gonna run it, gets a good block. And he got a great block from Charles Jones. Taylor Young there to push him out of bounds, but Charles Jones delivered a blow. Didn't seem like this was a design run from Huebner. And Surprised that Charles Jones actually found it right away. He realizes he's going to go and he gets out and he blocks Grant Campbell, number five from Baylor. That's great awareness from the running back, Charles Jones, playing his best football of his career in the last three weeks. Last three plays, gains of nine, seven, and nine for K-State, second and one. Deep handoff this time, Jones. And he won't get it. Jamal Palmer. The senior from McKinney, Texas, in on the play. K.J. Smith in the vicinity as well. Jamal Palmer, so athletic. He's only 250 pounds, but at 6'3", that length makes him one of the prototypical modern defenders, kind of a hybrid style guy. Could be an outside linebacker at the next level. Here he plays defensive end in the 4-3 as a senior. Playing some very good football with nine and a half tackles for loss in the season. Third down and one at the 48. Ooh. Terrell Johnson. A false start by number 56 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty and it's still third down. Boy, and because of the style of game plan that they have to execute today and, and with Huebner not being a great pocket passer, Needing that two-way go, meaning he's got to have those down and distances where you can run or throw. Those penalties become killer for Bill Snyder. Third down and six now at the 43. And they're going to let time expire here in the first quarter. End of the first quarter. Baylor leading Kansas State 14-7. But the Wildcats had their confidence. Fourth down. Baylor showing blitz. And Huebner will change the play. Huebner runs it. Huebner first down. Huebner sprinting and finally taken down at the Baylor 30. Chance.
Waz with a tackle, but it's a 22-yard gain. Here's the patience. Watch, 65's going to pull around, and Huebner's going to wait for that block to take place before he... See how he stays behind him? And then he takes off and turns on the Jets for the conversion. That's great running from the quarterback, Joe Huebner. Huebner came in with 258 rushing yards and six touchdowns. First down and 10 at the 35. And he hands it off. And Jones barreling through the hole, refusing to go down. Tell you what, Joel, this Kansas State offensive line, I think they ate gunpowder this week, <laughs> chewed on nails, and devoured raw meat. Coach, Coach Snyder said it was all about execution, but I think what you think, I think it was about the diet, something they were doing. Their, their mentality tonight, their tenaciousness has just been different than the last two games. They scored nine points total in the last two games. This looks much more like the team that played TCU a few weeks ago when we were last here in Manhattan. Second and one at the 26. 20 carries already. Dubner, Jones, first down. And you talked about Joe Frazier and body shots. 15 straight times you're hitting them in that floating rib. And in the 16th time, will they flinch? Well, right now, I'm seeing this Baylor defense starting to flinch yeah. a little bit. The first series, you saw, what, three yards, three and a half yards, four-yard gains. And now Phil Bennett's defense giving up the five-yard gain, six yards, seven yards. So they're getting creased now. That physical offensive line starting to win the battle at the line of scrimmage. First down and 10 of the 22. And Jones tripping. He gains one yard. And in boxing, they say styles make fights, Joe. Well, this one is definitely contrasting styles. Baylor, they'll score in one second if they could every single series. You know, they don't care about time of possession. Art Browse doesn't mind if his defense is on the field. Just wants them to execute like tennis and get a service break. One stop, he thinks, should do it. Second and 10 of the 22. They run the option. Here's your keys and it gets pounded. Wow. What a tackle. Campbell and Palmer as well. And Baylor says they have the football. And the officials are actually pointing for Baylor. That's the head linesman came in. Gave this ball to the Baylor Bears. Definitely coming out. I think that ball was Turned loose down. before he hit the ground. That was Jamal Palmer coming in. That athletic hybrid style defender laid out, had his right arm on the ball, and it started to come loose as Huebner was going down to the ground. I don't think he was down. Grant Campbell delivering a lick. Looks like Baylor has the ball. We'll see right after this. The Beast. 12-28 to play in the second quarter, 14-7. Baylor on top of Kansas State, and right now they're checking the replay. The ruling on the field is a fumble, Baylor football. Mike Pereira is with us. You know, After here's the further call. review, the ruling still stands. First down. Mike, it definitely looked like that ball was coming loose before he was down. Yeah, and the, it, it really got jarred loose right here quickly. Right there is where it's loose. So even though he tries to maintain possession and the knee does get down, I think with the fact that they ruled fumble on the field, I don't think you had enough that was indisputable that you could overturn it and put him down. I think the ball getting knocked loose quickly early was the key thing. So a first down, they'll swing it out. Corey Coleman lined up in the backfield, and he goes out of bounds after about a one yard gain thank you very much mike so you're talking about tennis a lot in this game with art riles baylor breaks kansas state serve yeah and then uh, somewhat of an unforced error there with just the ball handling from huebner putting it on the ground second down and nine still over the middle car and it's jay lee with the first down 21 yard gain the drives for Baylor so far, a minute and 46 seconds touchdown, 56 seconds touchdown. 
First down at the 45. Here's the pitch. Coleman. And Coleman. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Great job by Elijah Lee. The recognition from Elijah Lee allows him to get in the backfield right away. Shoots the gap. They tried to pull a guard out in front of Corey Coleman, but Lee just replaced that guard, got into the backfield, made the tackle. Had eight tackles, including a sack in his last game against Texas. Second and nine, pump fake, Stidham looking, delivers up the sideline, and it's incomplete. Ball thrown out of bounds, Chris Platt. And that brings up third down and nine. K-State with the chance here. Really their first chance all night. And a Legitimate time to get off the field here at third and fairly long and the crowd gets behind them. Do you bring pressure? Absolutely. Young quarterback always pressure young quarterbacks. Third down and nine of the 46. Stidham delivers first down Coleman. And Corey Coleman gets out of bounds inside the 40. Duke Shelley with the tackle. Way too soft of coverage from Kansas State. It's third and nine, and the defensive back runs out of there like it's third and 30. I know Corey Coleman's an explosive player, but that was far too easy of a conversion for Baylor. 15-yard gain, first and 10. Corey Coleman, one of the best in the nation. Stidham, he runs it, and Stidham slides down wisely. Flag on the play. They got Blake Muir, the left guard, number 73, for a hold. As soon as Stidham takes off, this is what's so difficult for an offensive lineman is that he's holding the inside of that jersey and then he doesn't realize his quarterback's breaking out of the pocket. And so the defensive player starts to chase after him. He's still got a hold of that jersey, and then it becomes an obvious holding call. First down and 19 for Stidham, who's been flawless thus far. That ball thrown into the flats, and it's caught. Gus Penning with the reception. Now, the reason that Jared Stidham is in the game is because Seth Russell had season-ending surgery to repair a broken bone in his neck, suffered at the Iowa State game, and even received a hospital visit from RG3. Russell was having an incredible year. 2,100 yards passing, 29 touchdowns, 400 yards rushing, six more touchdowns in his first year as a starter. Second and 15, Stidham, near side. Incomplete. Katie Cannon couldn't get a foot down. Seen a couple of those passes that are going out towards the sideline that have been overthrown. Cannon is open if that ball is on his chest. It's a completion. Stidham unable to put it down low. Got to go up high. Takes him out of bounds. Third down and 15 at the 44. And knowing Art Riles, this could be fourth down territory. Stidham, empty backfield. Here comes the pressure. And he's sacked. On third and long, they brought in the house. Will Davis with the sack, the middle linebacker. Clear breakdown in protection because only five guys are coming. They've got five offensive linemen, five Kansas State rushers. They're double teaming one of the defensive linemen that leaves a free rusher. Will Davis in there. Stidham had nowhere to go. So that brings on Drew Galitz. Baylor is fourth in the nation in net punting, gaining an average of 42.3 yards of view position on each kick viewers punch punts in FBS and fair caught at the 16 by Heath 14 7 Baylor but here comes Ezekiel Elliott is gonna have another change at quarterback this week as Cardell Jones will take over with JT Barrett being suspended against Minnesota first down and 10 of the 17 Kansas State the Wildcats have had nine-minute and five-minute drives back-to-back. -back. Hubner with a hole. Hubner first down, and look at the ball security on that play. As soon as the Baylor Bears got close, the defender got close, two arms on that ball, taking the hit, 
And Kansas State, just those body shots. 24 runs so far, only three passing attempts. Watch this ball security. He knows he's about to get hit. He gets under his pads. Man, that is a big hit from 28. O Orion Stewart, the junior from Waco, Texas. First down and 10 and 28. Jones goes in motion. Empty backfield for Hubner. And he runs it again. Joe Hubner. Another first down for Kansas State. Trevon Blanchard with the tackle. I'm so surprised that they ended up only having five players between the tackles. With the motion, everyone gets out of there. You know that they don't want to throw the ball. Schematically, Baylor right now is losing the ratio battle. Only five players against five. The offensive lineman plus a tight end get things done. Easy hole for a nine-yard game. Hubner, 17 carries, 92 yards and a touchdown. And a handoff, Gronkowski looking for the first down. It will be close, but when you look at Hubner in the TCU game, he set career highs for attempts, yards, and touchdowns. 26 carries, 111 yards, and four touchdowns. And with the way he's going right now, he could surpass that mark. Might do that in the first half. 17 carries already in this ball game. There is numbers against TCU. Boy, they had a great chance to beat TCU here a few weeks ago. They got away from their philosophy, though, in the third quarter and started throwing the ball. Yeah, pick six really did them in. Derek Kendrick, great safety for TCU, took it the distance. First and ten at the 38. And Jones. Sean Oakman there defensively. When he gave a club at the end of that to the head of Charles Jones. I don't know if he was trying to strip the ball, but Jones was actually down. He was spinning around, and he came down and chopped him on the head. Watch Sean Oakman as he's spinning to the ground, and then right here with his right arm, bang, right to the helmet. Second down and seven. Huber the throw. With Tom, delivers down the field, picked off. Ryan Reed plucked it out of the air. Back-to-back -back turnovers for Kansas State. 7-16 to play. Ryan Reed, the young man from Sherman, Texas, says, give me that. 7-16 to play in the second quarter. Baylor making Kansas State pay with the second turnover of the game. Now, huddle up with college football experts and live web chats all season long. A new guest every week. The Edward Jones College Football Huddle on FoxSports.com. Get the sense that the play callers, Dana Demo and Dell Miller for Kansas State, just got bored there with running the football. I would have made Baylor prove that they could stop the run before having to take a shot deep down the field. It's a mistake from Kansas State. Huebner with his sixth interception of the season. First and 10 of the 19 for Stidham. And Stidham lofting it wide open. Corey Coleman. Touchdown, 81 yards. C. C. Ryder. This guy is unbelievable. The most explosive guy I've seen on a field all season long in college football. Corey Coleman just runs right down the field. That's the risk you take if you're going to blitz Baylor. Kansas State bringing the pressure. They don't sit in that customary coverage that they're always running with two safeties well deep into the field. And Coleman makes them pay. runs right by him. Baylor scoring in 10 seconds. Corey Coleman. So now that TMZ Sports is moving to FS1, it doesn't mean that anything's changing. Boy can have a little more pressure on them. As those two have to carry TCU, that young defense, Baylor's defense, a little more sound than what TCU is playing with right now. First down to 10 to the 25, Hugh Newton. Winds up, throws down the field again, incomplete. 
This one intended for Deontay Burton. And that brings up second down. Yeah, there, there's really no reason to be throwing the ball down the field because Baylor hasn't proven that they can stop the run game that Kansas State has implored the entire course of this first half. That quarterback counter hasn't been stopped yet. I, I don't understand why Kansas State is throwing the ball deep when that's not their specialty. He'll gain seven on the play. And that's exactly what they need is manageable conversion downs. Third and under four. Now you're able to run that pop pass that I was talking about where Hubner runs the quarterback counter and he can stand up and throw the ball if he chooses. That's their bread and butter. That's where they need to sit the rest of the game. Third down and three of the 32. Kansas State averaging 5.1 yards per rush. Hubner drops it off to Jones, and he won't pick up the first down. Wow. Taylor Young, don't call me Smurf. <laughs> Boston, 225 pounds, the sophomore from DeSoto, like a rocket, gets out into the flat to stop that ball. Charles Jones had to reach back behind him. Taylor Young, boy, excellent play on defense. So Nick Walsh will kick it away. And Lynx Hawthorne is back deep for the Bears. Hawthorne signaling for the fair catch and has it at the 30-yard line. The UFC returns to FS1 with a full card of action headlined by what should be a wild rematch between middleweight contenders Vitor Belfort and Dan Anderson. After splitting their first two bouts against each other, it all comes down to this. UFC Fight Night begins Saturday at 7 Eastern on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, Stidham has answered the bell tonight. The eyes of the football world on Jared Stidham to see how he would play with this high-powered offense. And all he's done is what he's coached to do. Get the ball on time, accurately to the playmakers, down the field, as well as the hitch routes, and he's done it beautifully. Stidham on first down, the shot Linwood. And he'll get to the 35. Four-yard gain. Stidham tonight in the first half. How about these numbers for a 19-year-old true freshman making his first start on the road, 8 of 11, 241, two touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. Still, guns one. First down, Corey Coleman. Corey Coleman, All-America and Bolitnikoff Award candidate after topping 1,000 receiving yards. And, uh, Earlier in the year, you compared him to Steve Smith. I love that comparison. Do you like that? I do, because he plays with that passion. Borderline angry on the field. It's like one, he wants to rip someone's face off that's every time one, he gets the ball. That's one thing you can say about Steve Smith. 100%. <laughs> First down to 10 at the 42. Stidham over the middle. And incomplete. Chris Platt, the intended receiver. Well, that one was on the money. Platt almost split the two defenders for Kansas State. That ball actually hit him in the chest, but he was unable to corral it. Look at this ball. Between the two defenders, actually hits Platt right there. Very easily could have come down with it. Stidham is impressive. Second and ten. And they'll run it with Shaq Linwood. Linwood's still moving. And he leans forward, gets close to that first down. Newland with the tackle. Yeah, these freak athletes that Art Bryles loves to recruit, you know, what they do is they put so much pressure on a defense in space tackling. They break so many tackles, creating a short yardage situation. Third down and one. Linwood and a flag on the play. I'll start by number 61 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty. And it's still third down. Jarrell Broxton playing left guard. Wasn't quite in his stance when Stidham, Stidham snapped the football. That's one of those timing issues with the new quarterback. Didn't quite allow his offensive lineman to get set. Third down and six at the 46.
Linwood, and no first down. As Moore makes the tackle. And anytime I see a conservative play call on third down with Art Browns, I automatically think he's going for it on fourth. And he will. Fourth down at four. Here comes the corner blitz. They throw it far side. Coleman with the grab and a first down for Baylor. And consider this, Joel. When you look at Art Bryles, he's coached Bryce Petty, Nick Florence, RG3, Heisman Trophy winner, Case Keenum, Kevin Cobb, Cliff Kingsbury. And for him to praise this freshman the way he has means a whole lot. Says he's got more potential than any of them at this stage in his career. Now, RG3 was a special talent. You know, he was a world class hurdler before he ever played a down for Baylor and Art Browns. But this guy is a pure passer. Boy, he's got some talent. First down and 10, the under route for Coleman. A rare drop. Coleman tonight, five catches, 146 yards, and a touchdown in the first half. Yeah, I, would, I would think the committee is taking note. Yes. Of how this team is playing with their backup quarterback. Very similar to how they took note when Cardell Jones came in and played so well for Ohio State over Wisconsin in the game that you called, my friend, the Big Ten Championship game. Far side, another drop, back to back drop. You never see this with Baylor. Uh, Zamora lets it fall out of his hands. He's a young man out of Houston, Texas. Third down and ten. Stidham. Deflected at the line of scrimmage incomplete. Tanner Wood. Got a hand on the football. And Baylor looks like they're going to keep their offense on the field. They just went for it on fourth down in the previous set of downs. Tanner Wood, great job getting that ball batted down, but his defense is going to have to do it again. Baylor going on it, going for it on fourth and ten, and the pooch kick. Stidham, he's been excellent in this game. He's going to have to work on that a little bit. One thing he we found hasn't his done well so far. We found his weakness. There yes. you go. <laughs> <laughs> his pooch. So 3.08 to go in the second. And the K-State defense comes up. But the storylines in this game so far. This has been Sidham's start. You know, he comes in. This, this is a team that needs him to play well, get them into the playoff. But these Kansas State Wildcats had such great drives the first couple of drives. They weren't able to capitalize a fumble and an interception. And Baylor does what Baylor does. They make you pay with points. They do that whenever a team makes a mistake. Baylor winds up in the end zone very shortly thereafter. First down to 10 at the 30-yard line for Joe Hubner. Hubner over the middle. Nice throw. Good catch. First down. Winston Demo, but a flag in the backfield. I think they're going to get a hands to the face against Baylor. A personal foul, hands to the face by number two of the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Sean Oakman is right here on the right side of the defense. And at the very end, as he's trying to get to the quarterback, watch his hand slide up right there. You saw the left hand just get into the face mask of the tackle, Cody Whitehair. Cody has played so much football. He was on the watch list to begin the season for the Outland Trophy and the Lombardi Award. It's a great matchup there. Cody Whitehair going against one of the premier pass rushers in the game, Sean Oakman. First down and 10 at the 43. Play fake, Hubner. Throws off his back foot incomplete. He had a wide open Glenn Gronkowski. And that's the major weakness of Joe Hubner, his short passing game. You know, when, when you're trying to run those play action passes and allow the fullback to slide out of the backfield, normally, one, they're going to be wide open, especially on that delay. But two, you have got to be patient with your footwork as a quarterback. The quarterback wants to get out of his hands so quickly, but when you're antsy like that, the ball's going to sail because your feet are never set. 
Second down and 10 at the 43. I tell you about your putting trip. <laughs> Here's Hubner, quarterback draw with room. First down as he gets to the 30. Avion Edwards with the tackle. That was a nice read from Hubner. This is a design run. He perfectly reads the block of Charles Jones down the field, as well as the guard, Luke Hayes, number 68. With a terrific block down the field as well. 18 carries, 105 yards, and a touchdown for Hubner. Demo comes back on the field. A false start by number 68 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. So surprising to see these mistakes. You know, the false starts. Because Bill Snyder's team, have, they have led the Big 12 in the fewest number of penalties for years. Ever since he became a coach, they were always one of the most disciplined teams in the country. You know, you're going to have effort penalties like pass interference or, or holding. But things like false starts, that, that's going to drive Bill Snyder crazy, in particular in a game plan like this where you've got to stay within the chains in order to have short yardage opportunities on third down. Hubner runs it, tries to get outside, flag on the play, and he stumbles forward. Down at the 25. And here's our matchup. Cody Whitehair and Sean Oakman. Whitehair's holding by number 55 of the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty and replay first down. All right here. Here's your matchup. Cody Whitehair, 6'4", 305. And as soon as that run starts to the left, you see he just had a handful of jersey. Oakman reacts to Hubner. Whitehair wasn't ready for it. An easy call for the official at that point. So four penalties, 25 yards against Kansas State. First down and 25 at the Baylor 45. Hubner with time. And incomplete. Jones out of the backfield, the intended receiver. Definitely out of their comfort zone here, Kansas State, on a second and 25. Not much in their playbook designed for this situation. As a quarterback, I always felt like getting half of whatever the distance was in order to get to third down. So 25, you're looking for 12 yards here. You're looking for 13 yards just so that it's not impossible on third, third down. But what you don't want to do is try to get a home run and turn the ball over. Second down and long. Huebner. Knocked around out of the pocket. Looking. And incomplete, out of bounds, almost had that one picked off. Chance Waz covering on the play. Another thing getting half back does for you is put you in field goal range. But you see here, that's just an excellent job by number 56, K.J. Smith, the sophomore from Frisco, Texas, goes right after the ball in the backfield, knocks it loose. Huebner lucky to retain possession. Third down and 25. Haven't heard from Kyle Klein in this game. He's a very good possession receiver. Hubner over the middle. And it's caught at the 40-yard line by Deontay Burton. But well short of the first down. And looks like Kansas State will punt it away. Boy, the penalty is just killing them on this series. They had such a great opportunity to drain the clock down, potentially get a touchdown and receive the second half kick. I think two scoring drives there would have tied the game, but Baylor did a great job of holding on this series and knocking them out of field goal range. Bill Snyder's going to let this clock, clock dwindle all the way down, then take his last time out of the half. 
So we'll take a quick break. Seconds remaining in the first half. Baylor with a 21 to 7 lead. Kansas State ready to punt it away. Gonna send their offense back on the field. Oh wow. You're absolutely right with six seconds to go. I guess Bill Snyder says why not go for it. Hail Mary trips to the top of your screen. Here's Eubner trying to set up to throw it. Last play of the first half in the end zone. Two flags on the play. One is all the way back in the backfield, the other in the end zone. A long discussion about what's going on. Almost thrown in the direction of Cody White here once again. Holding by number 21 of the defense. Holding by number 55 of the offense. Those penalties offset. We'll replay the down. Boy, that's a huge break. For Kansas State. Looks like they're going to run the same play. Three receivers at the top of your screen. Cody Cook, Deontay Burton. Hubner moves to his right and won't get it away. He's sacked. Hubner sacked by Grant Campbell. Baylor, though, with 299 yards in total offense. Stidham, 10 for 17, 255 yards. Two As we start the second half, Gus Johnson, along with Joel Klatt, coming into this game, partner, the story was true freshman yeah. Jared Stidham. Yeah. Boy, did he deliver for Art Ooh, Riles. I tell you what, he has thrown some of the most beautiful passes in this game, right on the money, gone for touchdowns, and it was really the story of what he did and then the mistakes that Kansas State made on a couple of plays. First off, he got the... Opening kick and went right down the field. Quick drive, in for a touchdown. This was one of the most pretty passes of the first half. Right on the money to Katie Cannon. Hits the great Corey Coleman in stride for another touchdown. He's thrown for 255 and two touchdowns. And then it's what could have been for Kansas State. A couple of promising drives, ending in turnovers. First the fumble from Huebner, and then getting away from the game plan, trying to throw the ball down the field, ending in the hands of the Baylor Bears. Huebner is definitely going to have to Limit those turnovers in the second half. They get the ball, Gus, but as we look at the first half stats, you see that the rush yards for Kansas State are there, 144. They've got to make Baylor prove that they can stop the run game before they start putting it in the hands of the pass game in the second half. So Kansas State will receive the football to start the second half. Spencer Evans sending it away. Morgan Burns, Dominique Heath back. And this will picked up at the 31-yard line. As Couchman lays on the football. Let's go downstairs to Molly. Thanks, Gus. Baylor's coach Art Browns called Jarrett Stidham's performance up and down so far. He's disappointed he missed two scoring opportunities, but he's happy that he stayed calm regardless. Browns most happy with his offensive line, said they're doing a great job. They're a big factor in Stidham's success. And time of possession, obviously, in favor of Kansas State. Browns said as long as we keep scoring, they'll have to throw the ball and we can get control of the game back, guys. All right, thank you very much. First down and 10 at the 32-yard line for Kansas State. Hubner on first down, running the football, tries to get through the hole, and is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Sean Oakman with the tackle for Baylor. And Hubner in that first half, 19 carries, 106 yards, and a touchdown. No gain on the last play, second down and 10. Pumping, fires, and incomplete. Short arm that ball to the far side. Deontay Burton may have been open. And that brings up third down and long. Uh, definitely not the situation Kansas State wanted to be in to open this second half. And the third and long with Hubner about to have to stand in the pocket and make a throw down the field.
Third down, 10 at the 32. Joe Hubner with time. Down the field. Cody Cook, another big catch for Kansas State. And he's hurt, but he gains 31 yards. Well, that was a huge collision at the end of this play, but it all starts with the protection for Joe Hubner. He had time to let the route set up down the field. There, Cook makes an outside move, and then he gets back inside to the post route down the field. But you can see the collision at the end. Chance was also injured for Baylor. As he runs into Orion Stewart, Cook getting up. Waz still on the field, back after this. As we take a look, major collision between the two safeties, Orion Stewart and Chance Waz. And it's just Cook going down to the ground, and then Waz was left exposed as Stewart was closing fast. Boy, such a great sign that he was able to sit up, walk off the field on his own. My goodness. Your heart just goes right in your throat at a moment like that. First down and 10 of the 37 for Kansas State. Big 31-yard completion for Joe Hubner to Cody Cook. A false start by number 56 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. Now, this one is actually on the quarterback. They're going to call it on Terrell Johnson, number 56, the guard. But Joe Hubner never allowed him to get set. He was changing the play and then called the cadence too quickly. The offensive line wasn't set. The fullbacks weren't set. As an experienced player, a junior, Joe Hubner needs to know better than that. First and 15. Hubner runs it, stacked up, and finally squeezes through a hole and picks up a couple of Gary Campbell with the tackle, the transfer from Bakersfield Junior College before the 2014 season, leading tackler for Baylor, Grant Campbell. And this defense has answered the bell. They've done a nice job of stopping this run game that was so good early in the game on the first series. Phil Bennett has to be excited with the way his front seven has played over the last quarter and a half. Second down and 12 at the 39. Huebner pulls it out, runs it, tucks it, went through, still on the move. Stefan gets down, first down. Joe Huebner, 16 yards. That's the game for Kansas State. They go again with the ball fake. Great job by Huebner, and then he finds the hole. It's actually a backside cut that he's able to find. Watch all the purple jerseys. They're on the left side. He goes left. It's a big patch of green grass with a conversion. Boy, you never think that Kansas State's going to convert fifth, first and 15, but they're able to do it there. First down again, Huebner running it, tiptoeing this time through the hole. And it's a two-yard pickup, K.J. Smith, first man to him. The play that we haven't seen since early in the first quarter is, is that quarterback run play, that patient, delayed run, and then Hubner standing up and throwing the ball over the middle on a pop pass style to a slant route. When you get closer to the red zone, that's what becomes open because of the man coverage being played by Baylor. Charles Jones in the backfield, second and eight. Baylor showing blitz. Now they back out of it. Here they come. Huebner hands it off to Jones. He spins. Almost popped that one loose. Taylor Young with the tackle for Baylor. But Charles Jones... If he could have gotten past Taylor Young, he may have been still running. And Taylor Young, just an exceptional tackle, goes after the legs. He wasn't in great position, but he was able to get him down to the ground. Third down and six at the Baylor 19. Opening drive of the second half for Kansas State. Dominique Heath, the intended receiver. And now that will bring on the field goal unit. 
for the Wildcats. I love what Phil Bennett did there. He didn't allow Huebner to get his feet set in the pocket because he brought Grant Campbell on a blitz, number five. Campbell beat the guard, Terrell Johnson, and was right in the lap of Huebner, who was unable to follow through. He couldn't put anything on that ball, and that's why it falls woefully short of the wide receiver. Jack Cantelli in to attempt a 36-yarder. He's 8 of 10 on the season. Got it up. And good. 10.47 to play, third quarter. Kansas State to serve. Visit USAA.com slash Veterans Day. Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, Molly McGrath with you from Manhattan, Kansas. Sixth ranked team in the nation. The Baylor Bears with the lead on the road. Chris Platt back deep, ready to receive. And Platt finally taken down as he crosses the 25 up to the 27 yard line. Now revenge on the mind of Kansas State because who could forget back in 2012 when Baylor knocked off number one ranked Kansas State 52 to 24 in Waco. Colin Klein the quarterback back then. What a game that was. That was a great game and it's one of those games that Art Bryles used as a springboard as he was building this program towards what it is now which is back to back Big 12 champions. In fact they've won. 22 of their last 24 Big 12 contests. First down and 10. Shot Linwood running. Across the 30. Elijah Lee there to hold him up. You know, it's it's crazy. I, being a Big 12 guy myself, you know, this team won 11 ball games in the Big 12 before Art Bryles got to Waco, and now they're back-to-back -back champions. They've won 37 games in 22 of the last 24. It's remarkable the turnaround that he's had there. Another handoff, shot Linwood, he picks up the first down. I mean, you think about it. Steady progress in building this program for Art Riles. Four and eight the first two seasons, but six winning seasons since, including the outright Big 12 title and a share Big 12 title the last two seasons. He won two Conference USA titles at Houston before taking the Baylor job. Linwood gets outside, flag on the play. Gonna get Spencer Drango for a hold. Holding by number 58 of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty and it's still first down. Fourth year starter, All American, one of the best offensive linemen in the country. I'll be shocked if he is not a winner of one of the national awards this year. This is a top 10 style NFL player, co offensive lineman of the year a year ago, returned to school. Is one of the big reasons why they're able to run the football with such great efficiency over 300 yards as the second best rushing team in the country. This guy is a great player for the Baylor Bears. Spencer ranked the number one offensive tackle in the nation and the top NFL prospect in the conference by one publication. First down and 20. And Corey Coleman breaks a tackle, tries to get up the sideline and does. Sean Newland there to push him out of play. Just a simple hitch route that turns into a big gain after a holding call. That's why this offense is so good. And he'll hand it off to Devin Chafin. We'll back up to Shock Linwood. How about Corey Coleman? He's gone over 1,000 yards receiving in this game. Came in with 47 catches, 962, 18 touchdowns receiving. Third and four. That ball tipped and incomplete. As Starks gets a hand on it, Denny Starks, the junior from Crosby, Texas. And Arp Riles will send his punt team onto the field. Boy, what a great stop from Kansas State. All helped by that holding call to begin that set of downs. And Donnie Starks, very athletic play. Not a big guy, only six foot, 180 pounds, but athletic enough to get up there and bat that ball down. Galix punting from his own 30. Dominique Keith back deep. And a flag on the play back at the 47.
And they'll spot it at the 25. Bill Snyder, 2015 College Football Hall of Fame inductee. And as we've mentioned before, when you talk to Bill Snyder in his office, you feel like... ...foul by number 50 of the kicking team. It's a 15-yard penalty enforced from the end of the kick. That's Jimmy Landis. And he's the long snapper. Joe Huebner with another chance to lead right after this. On Goodley nine times in the game. Art Bryles, the architect. First down and 10 at the 40-yard line, though. Baylor has punted on their last two possessions. Kansas State with the football at the 40. Huebner, near side, he's... And Dominique Keith gets out of bounds at the 44. Let's go to Rob Stone in the studio for a Lowe's game break. Gus, number 20, Mississippi State on the road at Mizzou. Dak Prescott to Fred Ross. It's now 7-3. Missouri now 14 straight quarters without scoring a touchdown. Boy, Missouri, after a couple of years in which they win the East Division in the SEC, falling on a, a hard year, struggles at the quarterback position. Mississippi State with Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott has been one of the more impressive players in the country. Hadn't gotten a lot of love because they haven't been prominent in the national polls, but still playing well. Second down and seven, and Jones running, but Jones ambushed by K.J. Smith. And we've called K.J.'s name a number of times this evening. And he's the next great defensive lineman. Andrew Billings right now as a junior and Sean Oakman as a senior. They've got top billing for these Baylor Bears, but K.J. Smith, just a heck of a player, only 260 pounds. As he grows into that frame, he's going to be a dominant force on the interior of that defensive line. Third down and nine at the 41. Blake's locked down to five, two, and they get it off. Huebner. Deflected at the line of scrimmage, almost intercepted. Andrew Billings, the big fella, thought he had one. Trevon Blanchard batted it down. The nickelback, he's on the blitz on the outside. Closing fast, gets up in the air, bats it down. You see big 75, he's back there waiting for it, and he almost got it. Boy, those eyeballs become like saucers. Boy, that was right there for him, too. Nick Walsh sending it away. Links Hawthorne back deep. That's a take a bounce. Bounces backward. And it's down at the 31. 7.49 to play the third quarter. 21 to 10. Corey Coleman. He's electric. We'll see him right after this. Jarrett Steedham, Judah and Rochelle making the trip from Stephenville. And... His mom, Rochelle, talked to Molly McGrath before the game, and she said she's more nervous than he is. <laughs> that's, that's understandable. First down and 10 at the 32. Stidham out of the pocket throws. I wonder if she brought food. You think she packed some food for him? For Jared? Yeah. I don't know, but they feed him pretty good on these trips. Yeah, you know? there's nothing like mama's cooking. That's true. That's true. I know when he got to school last spring. You go home, make sure you get some home-cooked meals. Maybe some cookies or something, eh? And this is Chapin running the football. The young kid is impressive, though. He is, and he's done it tonight, you know, with without a run game. Dad's checking his stats. Third down and two of the 40. First down. Baylor, Jay Lee gets to midfield. And he, he's effortless with it. It doesn't look like it's a situation where he's coming in here and his nerves are out of control. And yeah, he's had a couple of moments. Very similar to Josh Rosen. You know, in his first start, so calm and under control. Coleman with the catch. He'll hop Corey. out of bounds. You know, these quarterbacks nowadays at a young age, they're more and more ready to, to play right away in college football. We're seeing Kyler Murray play for Texas A&M do a great job. 
for the Aggies. Obviously, Josh Rosen has been sensational for UCLA. And a handoff. Chafin again. And our Molly McGrath had a chance to talk to a very important person in Jared's life. Molly. That's right, guys. I talked to Stidham's High School football coach, Greg Winder. He talks to the quarterback every day, texted him first thing this morning, wishing him good luck in his first start, reminding him, do what you're good at. Don't try to do anything out of the ordinary. Chafin running. And Chafin close to a first down. Got to give a lot of credit to this Kansas State defense. This is a run game that averages over 300 yards a game. And they're sitting here in the third quarter. They've only run it for 65 yards on 18 attempts, under four yards a carry. This front seven for Kansas State has done their job here tonight. Fourth down and one. Baylor going for it again at the Kansas State 41 yard line. Chafin remains in the game at tailback. Stidham. And caught Corey Coleman. Watch out. Coleman, 10 yard line, 5 yard line, and finally out of bounds at the two. If you take a chance as a defensive back against Corey Coleman, you better make sure that you get to the football. Duke Shelley, the true freshman, breaks on the ball early, tries to go for it, just a fingertip too late, and Corey Coleman takes it inside the five. Eight catches, 204 yards for Corey Coleman. And a flag on the play. Baylor's coaching staff was very upset the officials stopped this play. The officials still conversing over it. And the referee has been having problems with his microphone all night. They're saying there's no, I believe he said there's no flag on the play. Yeah, there was a flag down here near side by the linesman. He threw one and stopped the play. They discussed it. There was no foul. And that's why Baylor's so upset is they want to run with tempo and snap the ball as quickly as they can. So first down a goal to the three-yard line. Chafin, the big back, 225. Stidham. Wow. Corey Coleman again. This kid is incredible. He's only 5'11 and goes upstairs like he's 6'2. This is a great throw from Stidham, just giving a guy a chance in the back of the end zone. He goes up and over the true freshman Shelley for the touchdown. Corey Coleman is as impressive as they come in this sport. Seven straight games with two touchdowns or more now for Corey Coleman. Nine receptions, 207 yards, two TDs. 5-10 to play in the third. Baylor going up 28-10. Corey Coleman again. Streak in Big 12 history. 20 touchdowns already on the season. 20. That guy is unreal. Yes, he is. Spencer Evans ready to send it away. Burns and Heath back. This one kicks short. Fielded at the 30-yard line. And Kansas State across the 40 up to the 41. Couchman running it for K-State. Well, this K-State team has just made too many mistakes tonight. The two turnovers from Huebner, a fumble, an interception. And then the last couple of series, one right before the half, and then their first coming out. Way too many penalties, in particular on first down, taking them well behind the chains. Let's see if they can put together a clean drive here for a score. First down and 10 of the 42. Gronkowski in the backfield. Burton in motion. Play has been so effective for him on first down. They've gotten away from it a bit after the first quarter. I don't know why. 
because it presents situations like this. Gus, second down, a short yardage, and the ability to go right back to that well and run the quarterback counterplay. Second and four. Bigger again, wants to throw it, bottled up and taken down at midfield. Gained about a yard on the play, Bo Blackshear and Taylor Young. The most critical part from a quarterback perspective of running this concept where you're trying to run the football but also could come up and pass it is being decisive. You've got to choose right away whether you want to throw the ball or run the ball because if you're in between, then that happens. 25 carries, 118 yards, career high for Hubner. Third and three. Hubner, quarterback draw, looking, he's got it, first down. Tackle from behind by Jamal Palmer. But Hubner with just enough to get a fresh set of downs. They continue to run offensive linemen in, try to stay fresh. Luke Hayes checks into the ball game, number 68 at right guard. First down and 10 at the 47 K State. Jones, not a lot. Taylor Young again, defensively for Baylor. You know, this team, Kansas State, for the last two, three years, they've had either a great quarterback in Colin Klein or they've had an excellent wide receiver in Tyler Lockett. And Colin Klein now a GA for Kansas State here on the coaching staff was in New York as a Heisman Trophy finalist, just a sensational player, led them on that run into a BCS Bowl. But they're missing those playmakers now. Very similar style of team, but the lack of playmakers on the outside clearly showing itself. Second down and 10 of the 47. Hubner throws it out laterally to Cody Cook. And Cody Cook, gang tackle. Grant Campbell leading the way for Baylor. I don't think I saw a game that Colin Klein played that he wasn't bruised up, bruised banged up, up bloody, bloody. And it's because they ran this offense with the quarterback run, and he was so good at such a big player. And then Tyler Lockett on third down in this situation is where he showed up to make big plays. Third down and eight. Hubner over the middle. And incomplete. Intended for Cody Cook. And that brings up fourth down in case State will punt. Taylor Young, number one from Baylor, absolutely drills Joe Hubner here. On the blitz, barely gets it away, just got pounded. Third punt of the game for Nick Walsh. Links Hawthorne lets it go over his head and into the end zone for a touchback. So top two freshmen in the country making their debuts this season. Josh Rosen at UCLA, boy, he's been good. And in their first starts, they were all terrific. Last week, it was Kyler Murray starting for Texas A&M after Kevin Sumlin opened up that job. Murray won it, and he showed his dual threat prowess with 223 passing yards, 156 on the ground, threw a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, but Stidham has been the equal today. On a day in which Baylor did not run the ball well, have not run the ball well, he's been excellent in the passing game and very accurate, which is so important when you're talking about these playmakers on the outside, getting them the ball in their stride. First down and 10 of the 20. Play clock winding down. A delay of game by the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. And it's still first down. You know, that's where the coaching staff can help you out. They just took way too long on the sideline getting themselves out there. Kendall Bryles and Art Bryles. And that's where you get caught because so many times in today's college game, you get used to the commercial breaks. 
So you get used to standing over there out of a change of possession. They got caught on the sideline. Stidham over the middle. Guns it. Caught. Juggled by Jay Lee. But he hauls it in at the 45. But talk about throwing the ball and putting it on the money. You cannot throw the ball better than that. Right on his frame. No reason to bobble that. Lee just took his eyes off the ball. Three catches, 52 yards for Lee. Now shot Linwood out of the backfield. And one thing I like about what Stidham is doing is he's got great touch on the ball. Yes, he does. That's the ball, and you've heard me talk about it before. It's not a deep ball, and it's not driven or thrown hard. It's called a layered pass. You layered it over the linebacker in front of the safety. Stidham again off the shot, Linwood. Linwood with a receiving touchdown last week. Week against Iowa State, Moore pushes him out of bounds. And that's the nuance of the quarterback position. Normally, you don't see young guys with that type of repertoire. They can either throw it hard, they can throw it deep, but they can't throw it layered over the linebackers in front of the safety. Stidham can do that. Third down and two. Stidham. First down, Corey Coleman. Corey Coleman. And I remember you were talking about something in our meeting yesterday about how sometimes the big play when you're starting your first game on the road is just a normal play. Well, it's staying within the system, Gus, and experience allows you to believe in the mundane. Inexperience, start getting caught up, and it's impossible to believe that the mundane can be great. Now he runs it. So a little bit of everything. Mixed bag for Jared Stidham. You know, he's run this offense for a long time, ever since he was a kid at Stephenville. And remember, Art Bryles coached at Stephenville. Kendall Bryles played quarterback at Stephenville High School. Kevin Cobb played. I mean, it's been a quarterback factory for a long time, starting with when Art Bryles started winning state championships there. And this is the next product. Stidham in trouble. And Stidham taken down. Good sack. Donnie Starks. And that could take us to the end of the third quarter. 28 to 10, Baylor with the ball and the lead. Back to Manhattan right after this. The scoring by quarters. 28-10, but it was a fast start for Baylor that's really put them in the driver's seat. They've been able to maintain that edge ever since. Jared Stidham has been terrific against this Kansas State defense that's been very good against the run tonight. Baylor has only run it for 66 yards so far, only 3.3 per rush. Third down and eight. Stidham steps up in the pocket. He's got room. And he goes down at the 40, close to the first down. Looks like he has it. You know, what's lost in this is that he was the number two dual threat rated quarterback out of high school, second only to Kyler Murray. This guy has some quicks, and he shows it here. Breaks him down, gets himself across the chains for a conversion on third down. Gain of eight, first down and 10 of the 40. Shot Linwood. And he's slung down by Will Geary, the sophomore from Topeka. Kendall Bryles and Art Bryles are going to expect more from their offensive line. This is an experienced group up front with one of the best in the country in Spencer Drango, and they just have not been able to get their run game going with Shock Linwood. Second and nine at the 39. And it's Chafin this time. Plowing forward, Elijah Lee with the stop. Chafin using that big body. Devin Chafin is 225 pounds, a junior. And gets him into this short yardage situation. Chafin again looking for the first. And he won't get it. Kansas State holding. That brings up fourth down and two. Hey, this is a spot on the field, just short of the 30-yard line. Boy, it's taken a long time to get on pile because the play clock is running. Now it's under 20, but this is the point on the field that Art Bryles normally goes for it. Offense is going to stay on the field, but they'll need to operate quickly here. Baylor two for two on fourth downs. Fourth and two. Chafin, the deep man. Stidham, first down. Wow. 
Jay Lee. Jared Stidham. Boy, he throws a pretty ball. He throws a pretty ball. I mean, it's windy out here, and it's just cutting through that wind because of the RPMs, the spiral. He is on point. Remember, Baylor's got the wind in their face right now. Chafin throws a shoulder and gets down at the 15-yard line. Caleb Pruitt with the tackle. This tempo taking its toll for Kansas State. And Elijah Lee is down number nine for Kansas State. Their linebacker, sophomore from Blue Springs, Missouri. So at 12.42 to play in the fourth, we'll step away. Baylor driving again. Because those were solid drives. They had the momentum before the interception. But the best part of the Baylor Bears tonight has been their true freshmen. That's what's amazing to me, Gus. This is a roster-driven team. They've got great NFL talent on their defensive line. Their defense has played okay. Not great against the run against Kansas State. We've seen drops on the outside by their wide receivers. They can't run the ball. And number three, the youngster from Stephenville is 21 to 29 for 376 and three touchdowns in his first start on the road. That's amazing. Second down four at the 17. Stidham, play fake, throws on a move in the corner, incomplete. That ball intended for KD Cannon. Uh, there is a flag on the play at the nine. And Stidham made a mistake here. He had linemen downfield. That's what Art Bryles and Kendall Bryles are, are telling him here. That play was designed as a screen, and he threw it down the field. An ineligible downfield, number 58 on the offense. It's a five-yard pick and replay second down. Is this lineman, he's going to head down the field. Stidham has all the room in the world to run the ball. That's what they wanted him to do is actually run. It wasn't designed as a screen. As I said before, it was designed as a, as a run. He thought he could then throw it, but Spencer Drango was down the field. There's your true freshman mistake. That's not completely understanding the system the way that Kendall Bryce drew it up. Second down and nine of the 22. There's big Laquan McGowan goes in motion. He's 410 pounds. Look at his feet, folks. He can move. Stidham. And too far for KD Cannon. Bit of an overthrow there for Stidham. Don't know that he had him open. Wasn't trying to throw that one away, but definitely didn't give KD Cannon a chance in the back of the end zone. A little unrattled here in the last couple of plays. Third down and nine to the 22. Let's see if he can gather himself on this play. He doesn't see the play clock. They get it off in time. Stidham with time. Lost one in the end zone. And incomplete. Corey Coleman, the intended receiver, Duke Shelley, breaking it up. That ball was just a hair late because Coleman is wide open, but Shelley has the last step right there to get back into the play for the ball. Plays the ball perfectly, goes up right through the catch radius. Duke Shelley from Tucker, Georgia, the terrific play. So Chris Callahan comes in to attempt a 39-yarder. And it's up and good. 31 to 10, Baylor. Said all we have to worry about is winning football games, and the rest will take care of itself. Let's hope it does. Lost a lot of faith in that committee based on their first rankings. Did you? Absolutely. I was disappointed Tuesday night. I love this sport, Gus. Follow it closely. I was disappointed in the sport. I was disappointed in the committee on Tuesday night. Evan sends it away. This one will be returned from the one-yard line by Morgan Burns. And Burns 
finally dropped at the 16. Why were you disappointed in what you saw? Well, here's my top 10 on the right as, as a voter in the AP. This is how I voted. This is the college football playoff committee's rankings on the left. And, and the problem I have with what the committee did is really twofold. One, the criteria that they use is such a moving target from last year to this year, from week to week. Last year they talked about game control, and yet they didn't want to give that on Baylor's side this year because Baylor has had better game control than anybody in the country. They talk about strength of record, some new equation about circumstance around a loss for Alabama. They talk about strength of schedule more this year. Basically, they were picking and choosing whatever criteria they wanted to make the case for the team that they wanted to put in that position. And, and uh, that was a frustrating thing. Silman running the football. So when you look at the college football playoff top 10, what team screams that they shouldn't be in there? Well, Alabama, without question. You know, if, you, if you're going to put Alabama where they're at and make the case for them with their wins above 500 uh, or above teams, then Florida and Notre Dame have a much better case to be above Alabama with that criteria. Ohio State hasn't played anybody, just like Baylor has had a soft schedule so far. So why is Ohio State up in the top four and not Baylor? When Baylor has had a much better game control than Ohio State. Second down and one, Silman. And Silman crashes forward to the 46, a 20-yard gain. And then just the, the last thing, everyone wants to say, well, these rankings don't matter. It's going to play out. These rankings do matter, folks. And anyone that tells you that they don't is lying to you because every game has a value and that value is established by these rankings this weekend lsu and alabama this game with the number six team in the country tcu and oklahoma state they all have a value based on where that committee placed those teams in their first poll so it absolutely does matter first down to 10 of the 44 huge there is this a double pass cody cook yes it is and it's caught by jones out of bounds Nicely done for Kansas State, but you got to keep in mind that three of the four semifinalists a year ago were not in the top four in the initial rankings, and eventually, cha and eventual champion Ohio State was 16th in the first set of rankings. Yeah, and, and that's what you got to rely on if you're not in that four up to this point. And uh, we'll see if the committee continues to throw darts at different criteria as we move through November. First down and ten at the 35. off to Jones. No, well, that's you for running it, and he stumbles and gets to the line of scrimmage. And according to Art Bryles, there's a lot of stuff that can go on between now and December 6th, but we can't get tied up in all that. Our job is to go win on the football field. Well, they got hammered in that committee over their strength of schedule to this point. Apparently, Texas Tech's not a good win, even though Texas Tech was able to beat Arkansas. But in November, they'll have a chance to prove it. Here tonight, they've got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, TCU, down the stretch, including the date to end the year with Texas. Hubner, wide open. Hubner, spring to the end zone, flag on the play. Hubner, touchdown. But let's see if it stands up. 34 yards. the face by number one in the defense. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Touchdown. Taylor Young. So Hubner. Sensational run here. His second rushing touchdown of the night. Here's where it's happening. Number one and Glenn Gron Gronkowski right here. That's where the penalty has taken place. His right hand just got right up into the face mask. I thought it would be a hold initially, but saw that right hand up there. And Hubner takes it into the end zone. Great drive from Kansas State. 31-16, Cantelli with the extra point, and it's good. 9.47 to play in the fourth. Wildcats still scratching and clawing. Joe Huebner, big touchdown. Okay. 
So the government crash tested the F-150. That Jamal Palmer may have been ejected from this game. Number, Number 92. 92 for Baylor. Okay, so here's the extracurricular, and then the official gets involved. And watch, it looks like he slaps the official's hand away, and that's when a flag comes out. They made an announcement about the personal foul and an ejection. Try to get confirmation as quickly as we can, but that would be huge because Oklahoma is the next game for Baylor. And since this ejection happened, this dis uh, disqualification happened in the second half, he would also be ineligible for the first half of the Oklahoma game. Jamal Palmer starting defensive end for our Brides. Cantelli. Onside kick. Let's go to Mike Pereira in Los Angeles. Hold on, flag on the play. Corey Coleman fielding the kick. It's an offsides on, on the onside kick. Onside kick from Kansas State. On the kicking team, it's a five yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. All right, let's go to our Mike Pereira in Los Angeles. Mike, uh, can you sort out what could possibly happen if Palmer has been ejected from this game? Well, I'm, I mean, clearly, if he did make contact, and Joel, I think you're right, it does look like he slaps off his arms. That's the official's job to get in there and try to break that up, and you can't knock his arms off. I don't think, though, it takes him out of next week's game. Fighting and two unsportsmanlike do, but I don't think this does. As Corey Coleman comes up with the reception, Elijah Lee makes the tackle. Two-yard gain, second down, and eight for Jared Stidham. Shock Linwood trying to get outside the stiff arm. Donnie Starks won't let him do it as he rides him out of play. Also, Sir Mike Ewell Moore defensively this run defense has held his ground and forcing another third down situation for the young Jared Stidham third down and five Linwood and he will not get it as he crawls forward to the 42 what a hold for Kansas State's defense that is an excellent job they got the momentum with the touchdown run from their quarterback, Joe Huebner. And that was their best series of football of the night at the most critical point inside of nine minutes here in the fourth quarter. So Drew Galitz comes in to punt it. First three and out of the night for Baylor. Galitz standing at the 27. Dominique Heath back deep. And he has it. And it goes backwards at the 20, make it the 19. 8.28 to play in the fourth. Joe Huebner in Kansas State. Not done yet. We'll see right after this. Saturday. Microphone, the referee tonight. In the second announcement, which we did not hear, he clarified that there was not an ejection, so Jamal Palmer is back on the field for Baylor. First down and 10 at the 23 for Kansas State. Huebner to throw it, sidearm, caught, Cody Cook. Now with the way that they run offense here, two possession game, Gus, there does need to be some urgency because they can't take six minutes and only leave themselves two to kick the ball off and get it back. So you've got to be thinking to yourself, if you're Kansas State, we need to score at the five-minute mark as it hits eight, minute, eight minutes right now. That's the game management that has to take place right now for Bill Snyder. Gain of seven on the last play, second and three at the 20. At the 30, excuse me. Huebner throws over the middle. He's got a receiver, and it's a sprint. Dibble down inside the 25. They've been running this ISO right at the linebacker the entire day. 
So Taylor Young steps up. He thinks he's going to get contact. Dimmel slips right by him, and that's an easy completion for Joe Huebner. What an excellent play design from Kansas State. Used the exact same play last year when they were able to go into Norman and get a big win over Oklahoma. A 46-yard gain. First and 10 at the 24 for Kansas State. Huebner hands it off to Jones. And Jones will fall down inside the Baylor 20. This defense for Kansas State has kept them in it all night long by stopping the run. Baylor yet to reach the century mark running the football. And now they've got a shot, 6.50 left. This defense gets the ball back for Joe Huebner, and now they're going to start pulling out the stops. Second down and five of the 19. Huebner handing it off to Jones. First down, Jones goes down at the eight-yard line. Ryan Reed with the saving tackle. Here's Taylor Young again. He's going to get caught in the middle of the line. As he reads run, he gets in there and he takes the wrong gap and he's out of position. And then he's having to dive at the legs of Charles Jones. First down and goal at the eight. Huebner's been effective this season from this distance. A false start by number 68 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. This offensive line is far too experienced for all these penalties. Holding calls on first down. Now they get down inside the 10. Just an inexplicable false start. They've been using the same cadence all night long. There's no reason for these offensive linemen to be leaning seven penalties for 39 yards now. It's not the yardage that's been a killer for Bill Snyder's teams. It's just been the, the situations in which these penalties have popped up. First down and goal to the 13 as they back it up. Cody Cook, the receiver in the slot at the bottom of your screen. And now a timeout called some confusion on the part of the Wildcats. Thirty-one seventeen, Baylor leading Kansas State with 5.33 to go here in the fourth quarter. But Kansas State with the football at the Baylor 13, first down and goal. Jones. Jones. And he'll get down. At the seven yard line, maybe the six. Orion Stewart with the tackle. Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for Baylor. Little Lancy over there. Second and goal at the seven. Joe Hubner loves to run it in these situations. Huebner looking, breaks it back, and is sacked. Fans not happy. Bo Blackshear, a loss of three. Boy, the management down here after the penalty has not been good. Huebner has to understand that he cannot take a sack at that point, just has to dive forward, try to get back to the original line of scrimmage to make this an easier third down opportunity. Third down and goal at the 10. Looks like he's going to have to throw it this time. Taking way too much time. Huebner. Play action. Huebner in the end zone. Touchdown. Deontay Burden. Uh-oh. 
It just got interesting in Manhattan. Well, that was a beautiful throw from Huebner. They give the fake, and then he lofts it perfectly between two Baylor defenders, and Deontay Burton comes down to it. That is a heck of a catch from Deontay Burton, the junior from Manhattan, Kansas. Third touchdown on the season. So here comes Jack Cantelli in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Seven-point game. A lot of time left. 407. Ooh, this is a critical decision for Bill Snyder. You got to kick it away. With the way their defense has played, you kick it away. No onside kick, away. kick. You don't need it now. You got a lot of time. You don't want to end the game now by giving them a short field. But Bill Snyder. He knows more than us. He absolutely does. And, and the one thing that he may be thinking about is, Gus, his offense is not a quick strike offense. They're not a two-minute offense. We've seen them have an inability to drop back and throw the ball. So if he wants to have the full complement of his playbook as they've been running it in this comeback, he would need the ball right now in order to drive down the field. They just took four minutes on their last drive to score a touchdown. He may need close to four again to go the length of the field and score a touchdown. Looks like Ian Patterson will take a full windup. And he does. Kicks it deep. Zamar Klein. And Baylor takes a knee. They'll get it at the 25. So Bill Snyder, conservative. He'll rely on his defense to get him the football back against the most potent offense in the nation. When you have the lead with four minutes to go in a one possession game, everyone looks at the quarterback and thinks that the onus is on him. That's not who the onus is on. It's those five offensive linemen, Spencer Drango, Blake Muir, Kyle Fuller, Jarrell Broxton, Pat Colbert, one of the most experienced offensive lines in the country, right now has to run the football against a defense that has stopped the run all night long. Baylor just 93 rushing yards tonight. First down and 10. Stidham the throw. Stidham over the middle. Oh, what a catch by KD Cannon. Wow. And an even better throw. 40 yards. Well, Art Bryles just told me, take that traditional philosophy about the offensive line and go fly a kite. That true freshman is some player. What a throw to KD Cannon. Time and time again, over the middle of the field deep, this guy's been on point. First and 10 at the Kansas State 35. Now they run it. Shot Linwood. Stidham is thrown for 419 yards. A true freshman, 19 years old, in his first career start, by the way, on the road. 23 of 33, and I can count off the top of my head three very clear drops from his wide receivers. This guy has been special tonight. And as you mentioned, Joel, not only is he accurate, but he throws the kind of ball that's so catchable for a receiver. Cuts through the wind. This guy is playing like a seasoned veteran. Second and two at the 27. Chafin gets through. Chafin down at the 15. I've been so impressed with the way he throws the ball. His release is so perfect for a young guy. Watch it. He gets on top of the ball. Watch how the nose comes down when he's throwing that layered ball. Time and time again, the nose clears the linebackers. Now the nose starts pointing down towards the wide receiver. Textbook. This guy is incredible. It doesn't matter what situation. He's been on point. Accurate throws. Wide receivers have caught him in stride. Stidham has played an amazing game tonight. First and 10 at the 16. 2.28 to play. Chafin. And he'll go down at the 12. What that initial completion on this drive did is essentially just set him up in scoring territory. So now 
they can play conservative. They can play the clock. Kendall Bryles holding his offense before he even gives him the play until about 18 seconds. Now he'll signal the play in on the play clock. About that 20 mark. Now he gets him up to the line of scrimmage. Great game management from the sideline there for Kendall Bryles. Second and five at the 11-yard line. They snap it, chafe it, skip it. Now Kansas State is going to have to start thinking about using their timeouts, two remaining. And they stop the clock with 1.27 to go. The only thing being said in this Baylor huddle should be ball security. Because a field goal puts this game essentially out of reach as we're under a minute and a half. Now you think back on the decision that Coach Schneider made, kicking it away as instead of going for the onside kick. I thought, and you thought, that he should have done exactly what he did, kick it away. But his defense had given him reason to believe that they could go out and get off the field. He put faith in a defense that has played as good as any defense has against Baylor during the course of this season. Baylor has just destroyed most of their challengers this season. 56-21 SMU, 66-31 Lamar, 70-17 Rice, 63-35 Texas Tech, 66-7 Kansas, 62-38 West Virginia, 45-27 Iowa State. Third down and two at the eight, Chafin flies forward and a flag on the play, he'll get to the one yard line. They're going to get big Laquan McGowan with a hold. Holding by number 80 of the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Still third down. Now, I don't know if he actually held him here on the left side or if this was more of, I think, that right arm there. But he goes down on him. Remember, Laquan McGowan, over 400 pounds, 410 pounds. He's 6'7". Critical penalty there, backs him up, makes the field goal harder, but this has still got to be a handoff. Kansas State with one timeout left. Third down and 12 of the 18. I don't know, Joel. Knowing Art Bryles, <laughs> he might let this one fly with this freshman. I think he's doing a smart thing here and going to talk over it. Art Bryles, terrific quarterback himself, All-State at Rural High School. As you take a look at Stidham's numbers, 419 yards. This is the 11th best passing performance in Baylor history. And he's a freshman, and it's his first game. Yeah, Incredible. He, he's been sensational. Seth Russell was having such a good year, and even Coach Bryles said, hey, this guy might have potential to do even more, and we've seen that tonight. Third down and 12. A first down pretty much ends this one for Kansas State. Stidham, he's going to throw it. Stidham, and trouble that sack. Travis Brits, Elijah Lee. Dialing up the pressure, and they get home. Stidham did the smart thing, and he didn't put the ball in harm's way. You never want to take a sack when you're in the red zone, but at this point, ball security is way more important than the potential points on the board when you're sitting there with a one-score lead. So here comes Chris Callahan in to attempt a 41-yarder. Good from 39 yards already. He started his career one of six, but has made... 22 of 26 cents coming into this game. So 23 of 27 from 41 yards away. And he missed it. Wow. Kansas State still with life. 51 seconds to go. 
down by seven, but they're out of timeouts. Good hold. Just wide right. Kansas State with white. How big were those mistakes from Baylor on the last possession? Remember, they had a touchdown to seal this game. And there was a holding call. But now with no timeouts, Huebner's got to understand every pass is either for a first down or outside of the numbers. Cannot complete the ball in the middle of the field. He's got no timeouts. Huebner throws it. Cook wants to throw it. Cook lets it go. Intercepted at the 40-yard line. Baylor ball. Terrell Burt. But there's a flag on the play. Boy, that's going to be close. His right foot was definitely inbounds. The question will become, when did he secure the football? It looks as though he secures it with the right foot in downs before the left foot hits. Hard to tell for sure. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on number 28 of Baylor. It's a 15-yard penalty. Orion well, Stewart was taunting the bench of Kansas State after that Burt interception. Terrell Burt has fought his way back onto the playing field. He was a starter to start the year. He started all season a year ago. He's a senior. Poor play early in the season led to Chance Waz playing safety. Burt gets on the field after the Waz injury earlier in the game. And he the ruling on the field of the is up Comes up with potentially the game's biggest play. Looks like the ball is secured there when the right foot is down before the left foot hits. Mike Pereira, your thoughts? Very tight play, Gus and Joel, but I think you're right. The right foot is down on the ground, and, you know, they're going to review this because they want to see a shot from the other side. But I think everything that we showed him showed that he really stuck it when the ball came in, and the right foot was on the ground first. What a huge play from Burt. The previous series, they tried that double pass with Cody Cook for a big play, and Baylor was ready for it here. That's the best look. It looks like the ball is secured. Left foot in the air before it comes down. Right foot down. Even if that left foot isn't quite above the ground. See, it's still above the ground there. I don't think there's any way, any evidence that this could be overturned. Obviously want to get this right with the game hanging in the balance. the review the ruling on the field stands it's first down uh, every look that we had Gus shows exactly what the officials called there and I know the fans are unhappy but three turnovers in a one possession game for Kansas State has been their demise and the Wildcats out of timeouts Baylor will kneel on the football but here's a bigger question. How could it affect this Baylor team winning against the Kansas State team, losers of four in a row, with the college football playoff rankings? Well, that's, that's a great question. There's one conference in this country that when you beat a team in the middle of the pack, you get a huge bump. We'll see if that's the case for Baylor. As we take a look at our Dr. Pepper one-of-a-kind play of the game, Corey Coleman, 81 yards. 11 catches, 216 yards receiving for Corey, and two receiving touchdowns. 
Wins are hard to come by in conference, any conference in America, in particular on the road. Baylor has only won one time in this building prior to tonight. And a true freshman came in here and got their second win for Art Bryles in Manhattan, Kansas. A dejected Cody Cook who threw the interception. But a different story for this young man, Jared Steedham. 23 of 33, 419 yards passing, three touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, no picks. His first start, folks, not 